Ten years ago, December 12th, 2007, Nancy and Joey Bochicchio were found murdered in their SUV in the Town Center Mall parking lot. Investigators have combed through more than 2,000 leads. But also over the last 10 years, many accounts and reports have contained inaccurate information. We're doing this story not only to update the public on the investigation, but also to remind everyone of the facts in hopes of finding the killer. In August of 2007, a woman we've only identified as Jane Doe drove up to the valet stand at Town Center Mall and said she had just been carjacked and kidnapped. She said that she had been abducted from the mall along with her small child by an individual that she later described as um, being about six foot tall, uh, possibly Brazilian, long ponytail, uh, wearing driving gloves and a floppy hat and glasses. Um, she indicated that she had been abducted as she left the mall um, at gunpoint, driven to a bank in the area, forced to withdraw money, taken to a secondary location where she was uh, tied up again in a, in a different manner. Um, there were some unique features to the way she was uh, restrained. Um, handcuffs were used, zip ties were used, and there was a form of sensory deprivation on her eyes where she was put initially with glasses on, and later she was put on with goggles with a sponge inside them. Again, trying to block out the, uh, what she saw around her as she was driving. Four months later, shortly before midnight, on December 12, 2007, a security guard at the Town Center Mall noticed a 2007 black Chrysler Aspen with its engine running parked near the south side of Sears at the Town Center Mall. Responding officers found Nancy Bochicchio and her seven-year-old daughter Joey bound and shot. As soon as we responded to the scene, there were some parallels to the August case. We immediately knew that um, there was definitive links between that case and the August case. The FBI joined the investigation because carjacking is a federal crime. Also, local investigators were hoping some of their tools could aid in the investigation. The case was shared with the FBI behavioral team in Quantico. They looked at evidence, pictures, and interviews. You have to look at things as to why this person's doing this. And I think in this situation, is um, they basically came out as that somebody who performs this extensive work, um, it's more than just the standard robbery. I mean, it's more of a control. Um, did the person have some issues um, personally or whatever with uh, people? Um, so I think, you know, in something like this where it's not like a standard, you know, carjacking, I hate to say that standard, but um, in a situation like this, it's something that you really have to look at and then have to delve into why does the person do this? Within hours of Nancy and Joey's murders, Nancy's credit cards and cell phone were found in Miami. And it was also discovered that the zip ties and duct tape used to bound the mother and daughter were also purchased at a large box store in Miami. Well, the important thing to take away from this is it tells us that our suspect has been there. And if he's been there, somebody potentially saw him. That's, what, that's why we're doing this. Your earlier question was why release this at this point or why release that at that point. Part of our strategy, if you will, while the investigation is ongoing and the following up on leads as they come in is ongoing, there's also a strategy as far as the public goes. We need to keep this in the mind of the public. We need to keep this out there. We need to garner the public's attention because we firmly believe that somebody knows something. And it's getting that person either something to trip in that person's mind to say, you know what? I should call them because I remember this has been bugging me for years. Or maybe something today is occurring in that person's life. Maybe something's changed in that person's life where they're more comfortable coming forward with information for us. You know, maybe they were afraid to come forward in the past. Maybe their position in life when this crime occurred dictated they couldn't come forward. And we want to keep it out there in the press that. We're still working this. We're going to continue to work this. And if you know something, please come forward. While a sketch of the suspect was developed, 10 years has passed, and investigators want to focus on the person responsible, not a picture. You know, if you, if you think of a progression as to getting in details as to what he was doing and how he's planning each one, you know, because something works one way um, doesn't mean it's going to work that way the next time. So, you know, maybe he started out by not binding them in a situation. Um, he just removed them and maybe there was a problem. 
Um, so he started threatening them by taking their driver's license. And because really stealing a driver's license means nothing. You can't use it. It's a female. You're a male. So, you know, by having that access to where they live, you know, it's an intimidation for people. And people feel that, you know, maybe they're going to come back, so I don't come forward. So if you are somebody that, you know, this happened to, you never reported it, come forward now. I mean, we'll do what we can to protect your identity and stuff. But, you know, if you have a piece of evidence or you have something that you remember about the person, um, it, it may link us to this suspect. Joey would have been 17 years old this year, and her aunt can only wonder what the future would have had in store for her. She'd be going off to college. She missed her time to drive, to make communion, confirmation, graduation. She missed everything that brings all the joy to a mother. To me, it's her aunt and her godmother. I mean, they were my, my life. They were my children. They were everything to me. We were always together. And for investigators, it's more than just about solving a case. I look at my own kids. You know, I, I have kids basically the same age. Um, I've gone through markers in their life, um, christenings, um, communions, going off to college, homecoming, things that I realize my kids have gone through that Joey didn't get to go through. Um, and that's some of the stuff that I talked to um, Joanne about, you know. She'll call me during the holidays or she'll call me on not just Joey's anniversaries or, or birthdays. She'll call all my kids because at this point she knows what they are. Um, and it, it, it really, it, it, it's what motivates you at knowing that you're doing it as much for her as, as anybody and to bring this guy to justice because he stole, he didn't just steal money, he stole all those events and all those memories from the family and from Joey. Um, Joey's pictures up in my office with my kids um, and it'll stay there until we solve this. Joanne Bruno is waiting for the day justice is served. I hope every day he, he goes through what I go through, that his mind is never at peace, that when he goes to bed at night, he worries that the next day he's going to get caught because every night and every morning I wake up saying, this is going to be the day. So as you heard investigators, even though it's been 10 years, they're confident someone out there knows something. If you have any information, you're urged to call 561-338-1344. And remember, the reward for the arrest and conviction of the person responsible is up to $400,000.